everybody. Welcome back. We got the Bronco back in the garage and um, we're gonna be doing some upgrades on it. So one of the things we wanna do, well, the main thing we're doing is upgrading the cooling system. Right now, as we drive it, if we drive it at all kind of hard or if it's kind of hot outside, uh, that temperature gauge just starts creeping up on us. Now I've, I've made sure a lot of the cooling system stuff is good already. I think I have a new thermostat in there. All the hoses are good. The coolant's been changed, all that kind of stuff. Everything's pretty much operational, but with us having like these big tires on it and uh, well, it just being slightly underpowered because it's a 2.9 liter, it, uh, it just gets kind of hot if you use it up. So we're gonna try to fix that. Uh, what we're gonna be doing is, the main chunk of it is we're gonna be doing this big radiator I got coming. I got an all aluminum three row radiator coming from a Radiator Express. And we're gonna be throwing that in here. There's also, we had already deleted the AC, which was right here, uh, but we still have the condenser in there. So we're gonna be taking that out. Maybe we get some extra airflow, hopefully, you know, we'll see. Um, we got an electric fan and um, controller, all that kind of good stuff. You can see some of the parts right over here on the table with a big open spot right here where the radiator's supposed to be, but uh, it didn't come yet. It's gonna come in the next couple days. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna get started taking this apart, taking some of the stuff out of it and getting ready. Um, maybe if we have time, we're gonna end up tossing in this little light bar too, just because uh, the headlights really don't do that much at night, especially if it's super dark. So um, we'll see what we can get to. Let's get started. Okay, so to get the fan clutch off, what you need is a 36 millimeter, one of the clutch fan wrenches. I ended up getting this one over at O'Reilly's. They had the thing where you can do the loaner tool. Um, so that's where I got this, but 36 millimeters is what you need. But uh, so we got the lower hose off and noticed a couple things. One thing I noticed when I was down there, so basically the hose sits like this and this goes up onto your radiator. And this right here was like right on the sway bar mount. And I was like, oh, because it was like pushed up like this looking. I thought, oh, well, that's, that might not be good. I got it off and like, you can see where it's kind of scarred a little bit, but it's also super soft and it has a little chew right there from a bolt probably. So like, that's pretty soft. Like we want to probably change this. But another thing I just noticed pointed out is I don't know if you can see it, but that's a Motorcraft hose. So this thing has probably been on there since 1986. So um, yeah, I think we're gonna go ahead and throw some new hoses on this thing. Um, I had replaced heater hoses before, but uh, not the radiator hoses, because they seemed all right, but we're doing them this time. So that was interesting. We went over to Napa to get those hoses that we saw that were, uh, that were bad. And uh, we go into the store, pay, all that's normal. We come back out and uh, open the doors to the Cobra here and just the alarm starts going off out of nowhere. Now it hasn't done that to us before. When I bought it months ago, the guy said, oh, sometimes if you mess with the electric door locks, the alarm will go off. And yeah, I thought that was weird. And the other weekend, like a few weeks ago, we actually played with the locks to see if I could get it to go off and it didn't. So I was like, okay, well, I'm just gonna start using the locks then because why not? And apparently that's why. So we had to go as far as to go back into the parts store and buy a wrench to disconnect the battery. So it would let me start the car to come home. So, uh, good to know. We 
drain everything out, and of course you have a transmission cooler in that radiator. And you're taking that out, and of course it all starts to get mixed together, right? Well, one way you can get the actual transmission fluid out of your coolant, so that way you can recycle it better, you take a paper towel and just lay it right on top of the surface of everything, so you see how it's kind of all kind of mixed looking. But that'll just grab the oil, so the transmission fluid in this case, and not really the antifreeze. So that way you can kind of clean it up some. that one. Alright, so for the day, I think we're going to just wrap up for now. Um, we have kind of everything kind of started as best we can. We got the radiator out, we got the condenser out, we got the light bar mounted where we think it's going to go. Um, we think we're going to be putting a fan controller on this little bracket here um, where the uh, cruise control used to be. Um, it didn't work, so we just took that out. Uh, the other thing, we got our hoses, but you know, we still need the radiator to put those anyway. Uh, much better than our old squishy ones. And then we also have, might be a little hard to see, but the switch panel is going to be going right here. It needs to be kind of finally mounted and adjusted and everything. But um, yeah, so at this point, we're just kind of waiting on the radiator. Hopefully it comes in the next couple days and then we can finish putting everything together and adjusting, finalizing, wiring, all that stuff. So uh, we'll pick it up in a little bit. we got here we got the 91 Explorer radiator and um, I'll put try to put a link in the description for it but basically what I've noticed so far a light way thicker awesome right and um, so that that should be pretty good a couple of those that are gonna be maybe kind of tight is you can see down there the lower radiator hose like spout is pretty close to that steering gear uh, but it looks like there's probably enough room for a hose and whatnot, so I think we're gonna be all right there, no problem at all. Um, the biggest thing that I've noticed that's different is instead of this being straight, like the factory one, it has a bend out here, which is because now that I've looked it up, the explorers have a whole different routing for their hose. So that's gonna be one of the things we gotta overcome there. Shouldn't be too bad. I mean, maybe even the factory hose is gonna fit. We're gonna see. Um, other thing I noticed is when this came, the uh, ouch. When this came, the brackets aren't quite straight, so I gotta kind of you know tweak these a little bit and get these all lined up. And that one's uh, got quite a bend in it, but uh, nothing too big. We can get that figured out. But uh, there it is. All right, so we got it pretty much in. Pretty much everything just went in like you would think it should. Um, that little tightness down there by the belt, that really wasn't any kind of issue. The transmission lines went in just like normal. <clears throat> Got everything straightened out for the bolts. At least, you know, there's a little wave in it, but it's straight enough. Um, and then the stock, well, the original style hoses seem to go on pretty good. Um, that's just a little bit more of an angle than I would like right here, but I think it's gonna be all right. It's not really too bad. Um, gonna see what it does anyway. And see where we go from there so now i got my little controller mounted up over here now i just gotta start running the wiring over here to the fan and wire everything up and then we'll be pretty much good to go all right so we got marker lights led headlights and for those really dark times led spotlight looking a little better
Okay, so we got everything installed now. So we had the, the radiator in, and I think I told you before, all it really needed was just a little hose massaging, nothing big there. Um, lower hose, perfect. Um, fans on, we got it wired up to our controller, which we put over here. Um, got it kind of adjusted, got it to where it turns on right at 160, so I think that's gonna be right where we want it. Um, other than that, uh, we got the light on. We got it all wired up. So not only do I have the light, I have it wired up, wired up to a relay right in here. So that way I get the direct battery power. There's not direct voltage going into the cab, out of the cab, just keeps it simple, keeps it safer. Um, not to mention, the way I have everything hooked up for the power is I got this little fuse block. We've got it installed right here by the battery so that we got a nice short lead going to the fuses. So if something does happen, you don't get a big fire or anything like that. Um, got all our fuses, got all our power wires. And then uh, the other cool thing we did, we got that light switch, the light hooked up to the switch panel to put right here on the dash. So we got it right here in this little cubby. Um, so just one quick flick of the switch. It has a little light that tells you it's on. And then bam, look at the light coming out the front of that thing. So we got that. The other thing I didn't actually realize I was gonna do until kind of got to getting some parts and whatnot is we got some LED headlight bulbs in here now. So now we don't just have the dull yellow blur. We got some actual LEDs in here. So hopefully that's gonna help us out some too. Um, we just gotta know, we're just gonna be checking everything out, take for a drive, pull up some hills and uh, make sure she actually stays cool like she's supposed to. I think she's going to, because we got like twice the radiator core here. Um, should be good, we'll check it out. All right, so here we are out here to test the light. So here we are with the LEDs, headlights. Now, I think one of the headlights shifted because it wasn't in very well. So I'm gonna have to figure out something to do to get that one to actually stay better. Uh, that's the left one, you can kind of see more light on the right side there. But uh, the real success story is that the light bar makes a huge difference. All right, so we had a couple snags, um, nothing too big. Uh, one of them was kind of funny, uh, this headlight. So I'm not sure what all was done when this front end conversion was done, because it was done before I got this thing. But I do know that it wasn't necessarily all done the way I would do it. Because, so anyway, the back of this headlight was back of both of them. I think there's supposed to be like clips or something that go, that hold the bulbs in. I don't know, I haven't had like a clean version of like a, a Explorer or anything. But I assume there's gotta be clips, but they're gone. So when I had these bulbs, they just kind of, went into the uh, the hole and they had like a little rubber, like a O-ring kind of thing that seemed to be what was holding the old bulbs. Well, these LEDs, I think they're a little heavier because they have like the heat sinks and stuff on the back. So um, that one stayed in, the passenger side one stayed in, but not that far away from our house. This one actually fell out. By the time we got back, it was just kind of dangling down here. So then when you accelerate it, you can kind of see the light kind of moving around and coming out. Anyway, so uh, what I did, because these LEDs weren't really like crazy expensive or anything, um, I got some like, uh, I got this plastic weld stuff. That's like what the package looked like. Uh, mix it up and kind of put it just around the edge of the, the actual bowl where it kind of meets the headlight. That way they won't come out. Um, I'm not too concerned about being able to change them because I wanted to change the housings eventually anyway, not too far in the distant future. So worst case scenario, I'll do that and then maybe I'll have the actual clips it needs. But, uh, but anyway, so I got those, that's all set. That's been sitting for an hour. Um, so ready to put all this stuff back in. Uh, the battery, the washer thing, that we, we're good to go. The other thing is it got a little warm when we first left and we're kind of doing some of the hills around our house. And, uh, but then after a little bit, it seemed like it cooled back down. Now, I, I, the gauge isn't really like a full on, like tell me the numbers. So I don't know exactly how bad it is, but it got a little warmer than it had been getting. So I went ahead, I, I pulled it back. And when I got, when it cooled off, pulled the, the lid off and, uh, it seemed to have burped a bubble because I had to fill it up with a little bit of coolant. So we filled it up. I left it open overnight so that way if there's any other bubbles, hopefully they'll come out too. And a little bit more came out. So I filled it with a little more coolant. So we should be good to go with that too. So I just got to put this back together. We'll go out we'll try to test it actually in the heat of the day, which should be a better test. So one of the more important things we actually did to this when we were kind of getting it ready to do some off-roading and whatnot is uh, it didn't actually have a battery hold down when we got it. So we ended up getting this one, making it work. and. Uh, that helped a lot. One of the times we were kind of just bouncing through a parking lot even, cause I was just like, oh, it's a truck, let's bounce through. And uh, the battery bounced and I think it touched the hood somewhere. I don't remember now, but the whole truck died. And uh, there was a big spark, you could see it cause it was kind of nighttime out. And uh, yeah, don't want that happening. Especially cause we plan on kind of bouncing this thing around cause I mean, look at it. 
So uh, yeah, battery hold downs are good. Okay, so problems. Got home, went to get a thermostat because it seemed like, well, you know, let's just throw a thermostat in it because it was, when it was first cold, it was kind of like it was getting warm and, but then all of a sudden it cooled back down and thought, all right, good. You know, maybe it's just thermostat getting sticky. I'll put a new thermostat in it. Went and got a thermostat, came back and noticed it was dripping. And turns out when this hose expanded from the heat, it came over, rubbed in the pulley and now it just leaks out of that hole. So. Back to the drawing board on the hose. Original hose will not work because it expanded into a bad spot. So next track, next uh, next trick, making this hose, getting a better hose. And there it is. We were doomed from the start, apparently. And a matter of fact, Sammy said it wouldn't work. But anyway, need something else. All right, so looks like it's time to start making some stuff. So basically what it seemed like is because the Explorer radiator doesn't come straight out, that's what's pushing this out. So we're gonna try to make something. I'm gonna try to get this to where it goes on the radiator, gives us that angle that we need, and then maybe connects like right there-ish so that we can go down to our thermostat housing. And we got couples right here to put it all together. So let's see what we can get. So the other thing we're gonna do just for an extra peace of mind, we're changing out this thermostat now. As you can see, it looks pretty good, but it was letting it get really warm before anything really started happening. Um, I don't see a whole lot of like stick marks, although it is pretty shiny right up there for focuses right up there. So maybe it was a little bit, um, but um, it also is a 192 thermostat, 192 degrees. So what we got to replace that is we got us a 160. That way we get that coolant flowing a little faster and uh, get this thing cooling before too long. So pretty easy to get to without the clutch fan and stuff on there. That actually make that quite a bit easier than the first time I changed it. Um, but yeah, let's get this thing in here. All right, so we got the thermostat changed. We got the hose made new. <laughs> Plenty of air space now. So even if we expand, we're gonna be good. Tighter bend here. So I think we are ready to give this another shot. All right, so it seems to be running pretty good. Um, if we are climbing for a long period of time, like in the gas, climbing a hill, it does start to get onto the higher side of normal on the gauge. Checked it with a temperature gun and that's actually running at about 210. So that's pretty much okay, because um, it cools right down as soon as you start giving it a rest or start going down a hill. Um, I think that's gonna be all right for now. Maybe uh, in the future, I might end up upgrading to a like one of the triple throw down crazy fans. But for right now, I think this is gonna do us all right. Uh, we got a pretty big test coming up. Stay tuned for that in the next episode. But uh, for now, it's running good. We got that all fixed, got that hose figured out. Um, you know, it just goes to show you, you gotta keep at it and eventually you'll get it all figured out. Oh, and it get, reminds you to make sure you test your car before you do anything too crazy with it. Anyway, that's about all we got for you today. Remember to like, subscribe, stay tuned for that next video. It should be a good one. And uh, we'll see you next time on Tacker Garage. All right, Sammy's first actual off-roading, even though it's not too crazy, still our first time.
I'll figure it out. doing this at this exact spot I think she wimped out before we got to this part now she's just keeps going Save that for somewhere cool. 